Oh, good morning. It is another wonderful Saturday morning in Florida. Last night, I posted on Facebook that I had reflashed the speed controllers, which is, you know, these little guys here. We've got three of these with uh, new firmware. The stuff that comes on them by factory only runs at about 50 hertz uh, refresh cycles. Oh, good morning, Fluffy. The neighbor cat. Well, at 50 hertz, yeah, it works, but it's a little bit slow to react sometimes. And you'll get strange things like uh, the, you'd seen the other videos that I had done that has the wobble when I come down from high altitude and it just starts wobbling and oscillating and looks really scary. And that's because that speed controller is not refreshing the motors fast enough. So, I had to work out a bug last night the wire that I picked up was for a different brand programmer so they weren't quite the same there's actually one pin different so I had to cut the cable and flip it not a big deal but it's always fun to try to find that stuff so and also now you know it's flashed because the music's different now so completely completely different sound than what it was before now Fluffy you're gonna need to move <laughs> And she is about fearless. So now the first thing I noticed right off the bat last night when I tested it is the motors are really quiet now compared to what they used to be. They used to kind of have a, a high-pitched whine and you could hear a chatter where the timing was a little bit off and that is completely gone now. But the real big change is, like I said, on the response time. So, it used to be if I would tap the sticks in one direction or another, you know, it would respond and it would do its thing, but it kind of, it would get there whenever it felt like it. Just a little bit slower. But uh, now, with this new firmware on there, I'm just going to tap the sticks to the left and right real quick and show you how fast this thing will go. So, I mean, it, it jumps, so... The other thing that you'll that I noticed is the throttle response. Well, it all goes hand in hand. So now, if you smack the throttle, it's going. You mean it? I just barely tapped that, and it's taken off. But uh, so, but you'll see how fast this can actually react. You can hear it. I can actually gun it here a little bit here. I mean, it is right on there. It's ready to go. And so I just still learning how to fly it. I'm still getting used to it, but it's a neat upgrade. I also flattened out the center of the uh, the throttle curve a little bit, so I've got more uh, play space in the center. Allows you to more finely tune the actual throttle instead of you know one click of the throttle and all of a sudden now it's flying up one click and it's dropping like a stone. So there's a wider response. So I've also got to kind of retrain myself on where to hit that throttle when I need it to recover from various situations. It also looks like now that the motors are more responsive, I need to tweak the center a little bit. Actually, that's, there it goes, just a little bit of left drift. So let's put this down real quick and tweak that. One of the settings that took me a while to find, it's called the auto level offset. Basically, it, you're telling the board this helicopter doesn't sit exactly level, so you can adjust it a little bit to kind of 
tell, redefine just a slight bit what center or what level is. There we go. So now let's see, let's get it back in. Still just a little bit left. So I'm not touching it, and you'll see it'll start drifting forward and a little left. So let's adjust that some. Positive numbers go right. Forward, uh, negative numbers go forward on pitch. So we'll oops, back that down a little bit. Actually, I went a little bit too far, didn't I? So we'll tweak it one more time real quick. We'll just tap that back just a smidge. Okay, he wants to park there, so we'll let Don get in there. Still got a little bit of that low, you know, that low RPM wobble when it's coming down, but not quite as, quite as erratic as it was. So overall, though, I'm happy with it. Oh, look, there's Fluffy again. 
Give her the hair dryer treatment. <laughs> You definitely need to be out on the ball field, you know, so you can open this up a little bit, but it's a nice wind protected area here to test with. You know, whenever you make these little tweaks and changes, just to figure out what's going to go on before you go out in a public place and embarrass yourself, which that's okay to embarrass yourself on, you know, on your own. Still, for the most part, flying with the auto level on because it's nice to be able to just, you know, just to you know, let go and know that it's not going to be going doing something totally crazy. It's not going to be going upside down in some random direction. But uh, because it is a helicopter type aircraft, you know, once you let go, it's going to keep drifting in that direction until drag and other forces stop it. So you still have to do that. Now, when we're talking about auto level, though. So if I lean it over, let go, it comes back to level and kind of coasts. Or I lean it the other way and it comes back to level and it coasts. But if we turn auto level off, see it. so far it looks the same, right? But when you tip it, it stays tipped. So let me get it out here someplace here, right? So if I take it and I lean it over to the left, when I hit left and then let go of the stick, it's going to stay that way. So. And it's gonna keep on going. So <laughs> it slowly drifts back to center, but that's a tweak on my part I can do. But yeah, so you're playing the um, marble on a pin trick, you know, trying to keep this thing from going crazy. You're doing all the corrections that the auto level takes care of for you. So there's some little movements, but you're doing it all the time when it's turned off. Just little things. The wind will start nudging it and you've got to bring it back. Oh yeah, I think that's pretty sweet. It's controllable. I'm sure somebody that actually is really good with these things could just have you a know, blast with it and go crazy. You see, they uh, haven't finished pruning the trees yet. They've only done half of them, and that was about a week and a half ago. The one that ate the prop last week in the video. Or two weeks ago, it may have been, huh? Looks like we got a little bit of tail drop when I try to gun it like that. I'm sure the neighbors like it when I'm 
flying this thing around their cars. Make them nice and nervous. Uh, Crystal's gonna say hi to the kitty cat. <laughs> she likes that one. Appropriate named. It's a big fluff ball. Yeah, I might need to bring that throttle up on the third motor. Because it seems to want to tip backwards a little bit. There's the evil spin of death that killed the prop last time, right? That's the other difference between a, uh, a quad and a tri. With that tail tilt, let's see if we can get it in a good spot where you can see it. That servo flips that tail motor to the left and right, which actually thrusts it left or right. So it's way more responsive than just using counter torque to spin like a quad would. So, I mean, that. It is right on there when you hit it. I'm thinking I didn't put the battery monitor on there. Okay.